Happy Tuesday! So we're back for our chapter book story time. I'm Miss Erin at the Caribou Public Library and we are going to read a couple more chapters. Remember individual stories um, from the Old Mother West Wind uh, collection by Thornton W. Burgess. So today our first chapter is titled Why Jimmy Skunk Wears Stripes. Have you ever wondered that? Why does he have a stripe? I guess we will find out today, huh? <laughs> According to this story and Thornton Burgess. So Jimmy Skunk, as everybody knows, wears a striped suit, a suit of black and white. There was a long, long time, oh, a time long, long ago when all the skunk family wore black. Very handsome their coats were too, a beautiful glossy black. They were very, very proud of them and took the greatest care of them, brushing them carefully ever so many times a day. There was, where, there was a Jimmy Skunk then, just as there is now, and he was head of all the skunk family. Now this Jimmy Skunk was very proud and thought himself very much a gentleman. He was very independent and cared for no one. Like a great many other independent people, he did not always consider the rights of others. Indeed, it was hinted in the woods and on the green meadows that not all of Jimmy Skunk's doings would bear the light of day. It was openly said that he was altogether too fond of prowling about at night, but no one could prove that he was responsible for mischief done in the night, for no one saw him. You see, his coat was so black that in the darkness of the night, it was not visible at all. Now about this time of which I'm telling you, Mrs. Ruffed Grouse made a nest at the foot of the great pine, and in it she laid 15 beautiful buff eggs. Mrs. Grouse was very happy, very happy indeed, and all of the little meadow folk who knew of her happiness were happy too, for they all loved shy, demure little Mrs. Grouse. Every morning when Peter Rabbit trotted down the lone little path through the wood past the great pine, he would stop for a few minutes to chat with Mrs. Grouse. Happy Jack Squirrel would bring her the news every afternoon. The merry little breezes of old Mother West Wind would run up a dozen times a day to see how she was getting along. <clears throat> One morning, Peter Rabbit, coming down the lone little path up for his usual morning call, found a terrible state of affairs. Poor little Mrs. Grouse was heartbroken. All about the foot of the great pine lay the empty shells of her beautiful eggs. They had been broken and scattered this way and that. How did it happen? asked Peter Rabbit. I don't know, sobbed poor little Mrs. Grouse. In the night when I was fast asleep, something pounced on upon me. I managed to get away and fly up in the top of the great pine. In the morning, I found all my eggs broken, just as you see them here. Peter Rabbit looked the ground over very carefully. He hunted around behind the great pine. He looked under the bushes. He studied the ground with a very wise air. Then he hopped off down the lone little path to the, to the green meadows. He stopped at the house of Johnny Chuck. What makes your eyes so big and round? asked Johnny Chuck. Peter Rabbit came very close so as to whisper in Johnny Chuck's ear and told him all that he had seen. Together they went to Jimmy, Chuck, Jimmy Skunk's house. Jimmy Skunk was in bed. He was very sleepy and very cross when he came to the door. Peter Rabbit told him what he had seen. Too bad, too bad, said Jimmy Skunk. Mm. But he yawned sleepily. Won't you join us in trying to find out who did it? asked Johnny Chuck. Jimmy Skunk said he would be delighted to come, but that he had some other business that morning and that he would join them in the afternoon. Peter Rabbit and Johnny Chuck went on. Pretty soon they met the Merry Little Breezes and told them the dreadful story. What shall we do? asked Johnny Chuck. We'll hurry over and tell old Dame Natures, cried the Merry Little Breezes and ask her what to do. So away flew the Merry Little Breezes to Old Dame Nature and told her all the dreadful story. Old Dame Nature listened very at attentively. Then she sent the Merry Little Breezes to all the little meadow folks to tell everyone to be at the Great Pine that afternoon. Now, whatever Old Dame Nature commanded, all the meadow folk were obliged to do. They did not dare to disobey her. Promptly at four o'clock that afternoon, all the meadow folk were gathered around the foot of the great pine. Broken-hearted little Mrs. Ruffed Grouse sat beside her empty nest with all the broken shells about her. 
Reddy Fox, Peter Rabbit, Johnny Chuck, Billy Mink, Little Joe Otter, Jerry Muskrat, Hooty the Owl, Bobby Coon, Sammy Jay, Blackie the Crow, Grandfather Frog, Mr. Toad, Spotty the Turtle, and Merry Little Breezes all were there. Last of all came Jimmy Skunk. Very handsome he looked in his shining black coat and very sorry he appeared that such a dreadful thing should have happened. He told Mrs. Grouse how badly he felt and he loudly demanded that the culprit should be found out and severely punished. Old Dame Nature had the most smiling face in the world. Oh, has the most smiling face in the world. But this time it was a very, very grave indeed. Oh, it was very grave. First, she asked little Mrs. Grouse to tell her story all over again that all might hear. Then each in turn was asked to tell where he had been the night before. Johnny Chuck, Happy Jack Squirrel, Striped Chipmunk, Sammy Jay, and Blackie the Crow had gone to bed when Mr. Sun went down behind the Purple Hills. Jerry Muskrat, Billy Mink, Little Joe Otter, Grandfather Frog, and Spotty the Turtle had not left the Smiling Pool. Bobby Coon had been down in Farmer Brown's cornfield. Hooty the Owl had been hunting in the lower end of the Green Meadow. Peter Rabbit had been down in the Berry Patch. Mr. Toad had been under the piece of bark which he called a house. Old Dame Nature called on Jimmy Skunk last of all. Jimmy protested that he had been very, very tired and had gone to bed very early indeed and had slept the whole night through. Then Old Dame Nature asked Peter Rabbit what he had found among the eggshells that morning. Peter Rabbit hopped out and laid three long black hairs before Old Dame Nature. These, said Peter Rabbit, are what I found among the eggshells. Then old Dame Nature called Johnny Chuck. Tell us, Johnny Chuck, said she, what you saw when you called at Jimmy Skunk's house this morning. I, Scott, I saw Jimmy, Jimmy Skunk, said Johnny Chuck, and Jimmy seemed very, very sleepy. It seemed to me that his whiskers were yellow. That will do, said old Dame Nature. And then she called old Mother Westwind. What time did you come down on the green meadows this morning? asked Old Dame Nature. Just at the break of day, said Old Mother Westwind, as Mr. Sun was coming up from behind the Purple Hills. And whom did you see so early in the morning? asked Old Dame Nature. I saw Bobby Coon going home from Old Farmer Brown's cornfield, said Old Mother Westwind. I saw Hooty the Owl coming back from the lower end of the Green Meadows. I saw Peter Rabbit down in the berry patch. Last of all, I saw something like a black shadow coming up, coming down, the lone little path toward the house of Jimmy Skunk. Everyone was looking very hard at Jimmy Skunk. Jimmy began to look very unhappy and very uneasy. Who wears a black coat? asked Dame Nature. Jimmy Skunk, shouted all the little meadow folks. What might make whiskers yellow? asked, the, asked old Dame Nature. No one seemed to know at first. Then Peter Rabbit spoke up. It might be the yolk of an egg, asked, or said Peter Rabbit. Who are likely to be sleepy on a bright sunny morning? Asked old Dame Nature. People who've been up all night, said Johnny Chuck, who himself always goes to bed with the sun. Jimmy Skunk, said old Dame Nature, and her voice was very stern, very stern indeed. Her face was very grave. Jimmy Skunk, I accuse you of having broken and eating the shells of Mrs. Grouse. What have you to say for yourself? Jimmy Skunk hung his head. He hadn't a word to say. He just wanted to sneak away by himself. Jimmy Skunk, said old Dame Nature, because your handsome black coat, of which you are so proud, has made it possible for you to move about in the night without being seen. And because we can no longer trust you upon your honor, henceforth you and your descendants shall wear a striped coat, which is the sign that you cannot be trusted. Your coat hereafter shall be black and white, that when you move about in the night, you will always be visible. And this is why that to this day, Jimmy Skunk wears a striped suit of black and white. <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> All right, our next chapter is called Willful Little Breeze. Hmm, willful. Old Mother Westwind was tired, tired and just a wee bit cross. Cross because she was tired. She had had a very busy day. Ever since early morning, she had been puffing out the white sails of the ships on the big ocean so that they might go faster. 
She had kept all the big and little windmills whirling and whirling to pump water for thirsty folks and grind corn for hungry folks. She had blown away all the smoke from tall chimneys and engines and steamboats. Yes, indeed, Old Mother West Wind had been very, very busy. Now she was coming across the green meadows on her way to her home behind the purple hills. And as she came, she opened the big bag that she carried and called to her children, the Merry Little Breezes, who had been playing hard on the green meadows all long day. One by one, they crept into the big bag for they were tired too and ready to go to their home behind the purple hills. Pretty soon, all were in the bag but one, a willful little breeze who was not quite ready to go home. He wanted to play just a little longer. He danced ahead of Old Mother West Wind and he kissed the sleepy daisies and he shook the nodding buttercups. He set all the little poplar leaves to dancing too and he wouldn't come into the big bag. So Old Mother West Wind closed the big bag and slung it over her shoulder. Then she started on toward her home behind the purple hills. When she had gone, the willful little breeze left suddenly, oh, left behind suddenly felt very lonely, very lonely indeed. The sleepy daisies didn't want to play. The nodding buttercups were cross. Great round bright Mr. Sun, who had been shining and shining all day long, went to bed and put on his nightcap of golden clouds. Black shadows came creeping, creeping out into the green meadows. The willful little breeze began to wish that he was safe in Old Mother West Wind's big bag with all the other merry little breezes. So he started across the green meadows to find the purple hills. But all the hills were black now, and he could not tell which he should look behind to find his home with Old Mother West Wind and the Merry Little Breezes. How he did wish that he had minded Old Mother West Wind. By and by, he curled up by a bay bayberry bush and tried to go to sleep. But he was lonely, oh, so lonely, and he couldn't go to sleep. Old Mother Moon came up and flooded all the green meadows with light. But it wasn't like the bright light of jolly round Mr. Sun for it was cold and white and it made many black shadows. Pretty soon the willful little breeze heard Hooty the owl out hunting for a meadow mouse for his dinner. Then down the lone little path which ran close to the bayberry bush trotted Reddy Fox. He was trotting very softly and every minute <clears throat> or so he turned his head and looked behind him to see if he was followed. It was plain to see that Reddy Fox was bent on mischief. When he reached the bayberry bush, Reddy Fox sat down and barked twice. Hooty the owl answered him at once and flew over to join him. They didn't see the willful little breeze curled up under the bayberry bush. So intent were these two rogues in plotting mischief. They were planning to steal down across the green meadows to the edge of the brown pasture where Mr. Bob White and pretty Mrs. Bob White and a dozen little Bob Whites had their home. When they run along the ground, I'll catch them. And when they fly up in the air, you catch them and we'll gobble them all up, said Reddy Fox to Hooty the Owl. Then he licked his chops and Hooty the Owl snapped his bill, just as if they were tasting tender little Bob Whites that very minute. It made the willful little breeze shiver to see them. Pretty soon, they all started on towards the brown pasture. When they were out of sight, the willful little breeze jumped up and shook himself. Then away he sped across the green meadows to the brown pasture. And because he could go faster and because he was a shorter way, he got there first. He had to hunt and hunt to find Mr. and Mrs. Bob White and all the little Bob Whites. But finally he did find them, all with their heads tucked under their wings, fast asleep. The willful little breeze shook Mr. Bob White very gently. In an instant, he was wide awake. Shh, said the willful little breeze. Reddy Fox and Hooty the Owl are coming to the brown pasture to gobble you up and Mrs. Bob White and all the little Bob Whites. Thank you, little breeze, said Mr. Bob White. I think I'll move my family. Then he woke Mrs. Bob White and all the little Bob Whites and Mr. Bob White led the, the, he led the way. They all flew to the far side of the brown pasture where they were soon safely hidden under a juniper tree. Ah, the willful little breeze saw them safely there and when they were nicely hidden, hurried back to the place where the Bob Whites had been sleeping. Reddy Fox was stealing up through the grass very, very softly. Hooty the Owl was flying as silently as a shadow. When Reddy Fox thought he was near enough, he drew himself together and made a quick spring and landed right in Mr. Bob White's empty bed. Reddy Fox and Hooty the Owl looked so surprised and foolish when they found that the Bob Whites were not there that the willful little breeze nearly laughed out loud. Then Reddy Fox and Hooty the Owl hunted here and hunted there all over the brown pasture, but they couldn't find the Bob Whites.
and the willful little breeze went back to the juniper tree and curled himself beside Mr. Bob White to sleep, for he was, lon for he was lonely no longer. <laughs> okay, we're going to do one more. This last one is called Reddy Fox Goes Fishing. <laughs> one morning when Mr. Sun was very, very bright and it was very, very warm down on the green meadows, Reddy Fox came hopping and skipping down the lone little path that leads to the Laughing Brook. Hoppity skip, hoppity skip. Reddy felt very much pleased with himself that sunny morning. Pretty soon he saw Johnny Chuck sitting up very straight close by the little house where he lives. Johnny Chuck, 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 Johnny Chuck, 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 Johnny Woodchuck, called Reddy Fox. Johnny Chuck pretended not to hear. His mother had told him not to play with Reddy Fox, for Reddy Fox was a bad boy. Johnny Chuck, 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 Johnny Woodchuck, called Reddy again. This time Johnny turned and looked. He could see Reddy Fox turning somersaults and chasing his tail and rolling over and over in the little path. Come on, said Reddy Fox, let's go fishing. Can't, said Johnny Chuck because you know his mother had told him not to play with Reddy Fox. I'll show you how to catch a fish, said Reddy Fox, and tried to jump over his own shadow. Can't, said good little Johnny Chuck again, and turned away so that he couldn't see Reddy Fox chasing butterflies and playing catch with field mice children. So Reddy Fox went down to the laughing brook all alone. The brook was laughing and singing on its way to join the big river. The sky was blue and the sun was bright, Reddy Fox jumped on the big rock in the middle of the Laughing Brook and peeped over the other side. What do you think he saw? Why, right down below, in a dear little pool, were little Mr. and Mrs. Trout and all the little trouts. Reddy Fox wanted some of those little trouts to take home for his dinner, but he didn't know how to catch them. He lay flat down on the big rock and reached way down into the dear little pool. But all the little trouts laughed at Reddy Fox and not one came within reach. Then Mr. Trout swam up so quickly that Reddy Fox didn't see him coming and bit Reddy's little black paw hard. Ouch, cried Reddy Fox, pulling in his black paw out of the water. And all the little trouts laughed at Reddy Fox. Just then along came Billy Mink. Hello, Reddy Fox, said Billy Mink. What are you doing here? I'm trying to catch a fish, said Reddy Fox. Poof, that's easy, said Billy Mink. I'll show you how. So Billy Mink lay down on the big rock side on the big rock side of Reddy Fox and peeped over into the dear little pool where all the little trouts were laughing at Reddy Fox and having such a good time. But Billy Mink took care, such very great care, that Mr. Trout and Mrs. Trout should not see him peeping over into the dear little pool. Yeah, I'm yawning. <laughs> into the dear little pool. When Billy Mink saw all those little trouts playing in the dear little pool, he laughed. You count three, Reddy Fox, he said, and I'll show you how to catch a fish. One, said Reddy Fox. Two, what's next? Three, splash. Billy Mink had dived headfirst into the dear little pool. He splattered water way up onto Reddy Fox and he frightened old Mr. Frog so that he fell over backwards off the lily pad where he was taking a morning nap right into the water. In a minute, Billy Mink climbed out on the other side of the dear little pool and sure enough, he had caught one of the little trouts. Give it to me, cried Reddy Fox. Catch one yourself, said Billy Mink. Old Grandpa Mink wants a fish for his dinner, so I'm going to take this home. You're afraid, Reddy Fox, Freddy Cat, Freddy Cat. Billy Mink shook all the water off of his little brown coat and picked up the little trout and ran off home. Ooh. Reddy Fox lay down again on the big black rock and peeped into the dear little pool. Not a single trout could he see. They were all hiding safely with Mr. and Mrs. Trout. Reddy Fox watched and watched. The sun was warm, the laughing brook was singing a lullaby. And what do you think? Why, Reddy Fox went fast to sleep on the edge of the great big rock. By and by, Reddy Fox began to dream. He dreamed that he had a nice little brown coat that was waterproof, just like the little brown coat that Billy Mink wore. Yes, he dreamed that he had learned to swim and to catch fish just as Billy Mink did. He dreamed that the dear little pool was full of little trouts and that he was just going to catch one when, splash, Reddy Fox had rolled right off the big rock into the dear little pool. The water went into his eyes and it went up his nose and he swallowed so much that he felt as if he could never, never want another drink of water. And his beautiful red coat, which old mother Fox had told him to be very, very careful of because he couldn't have another for a whole year, was oh so wet. 
and his pants were wet and his beautiful bushy tail, of which he was so proud, was so full of water that he couldn't hold it up, but had to drag it up the bank after him as he crawled out of the dear little pool. Ha ha ha, laughed Mr. Kingfisher, sitting on a tree. Ho ho ho, laughed Mr. Old Frog, old Mr. Frog, who had climbed back on his lily pad. Hee hee hee, laughed all the little trouts and Mr. and Mrs. Trout, swimming round and round in the dear little pool. Ha ha ha, ho ho ho, hee hee hee, laughed Billy Mink, who had come back to the big rock just in time to see Reddy Fox tumble in. Reddy Fox didn't say a word. He was so ashamed. He just crept up the lone little path to his home, dragging his tail all wet and muddy behind him and dripping water all the way. Johnny Chuck was still sitting by his door as his mother had told him to. Reddy Fox tried to go past without being seen, but Johnny Chuck's bright little eyes saw him. Where are your fish, Reddy Fox? called Johnny Chuck. Reddy Fox never said a word, but walked faster. Why don't you turn somersaults and jump over your shadow and chase butterflies and play with the little field mice, Reddy Fox? called Johnny Chuck. But Reddy Fox just walked faster. When he got home, or almost home, he saw old Mother Fox sitting in the doorway with a great big switch across her lap. For Mother Fox had told Reddy Fox not to go near the Laughing Brook. And all this, this all I'm going to tell you about how Reddy Fox went fishing. Oh, this is all. Let me read that sentence one last time. And this is all I'm going to tell you about how Reddy Fox went fishing. <laughs> well, that's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the stories in Old Mother West Wind. I am going to be starting a new book tomorrow called The Snare. It is from a series called Star Wars Adventures in Wild Space. So hope you guys are able to join me. We'll look forward to that tomorrow. Bye.